ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. Team Bahamas closing out pool play today at the Little League World Series Caribbean Qualifier in Curacao. The 2-4-2 getting another big performance on the mound from Alex Inez as they shut out the Dominican Republic 5-0. The Bahamas finishing up with a record of 3-2 as it stands right now. If Cuba wins out, the Bahamas cannot move on to the crossover semifinals, which is required to remain alive for a shot at Williamsport. However, Curacao has lodged a protest against one of the Cuban pitchers disputing his age. Now that protest is upheld, the Bahamas will advance to the Final Four, so let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, the start of the Pan Am Games just over a week away now, and as Charles Fisher tells us, the machinery in the Bahamas Olympic Committee is hard at work, making sure everything goes according to plan. The teams have been selected, but that sometimes is the easy part. Getting Team Bahamas to games and making sure they look the part is one of the tedious tasks. That fall on the BOC and Chef the Mission DRC Ramming and crew. Bags, pins, shoes and all, everything the athlete may need. First of all, you know, we need to know who qualified and that, so that's dealing with the various uh, federations all, which have all different rules and deadlines and times and then we have our own international rules and deadlines and times because it's you know it's really a BOC event mm -hmm. and so uh, once we've kind of determined that then we have to individualize it to the athletes. Then there is the making sure the athletes get to the games that fall on team manager Dawn Woodside Johnson. So we have to make sure that we contact each and every athlete to make sure what their own personal needs are, um, the sizes of their uniforms, uh, make sure they have everything that they need. And um, also we went into the ticketing, trying to get their tickets in order because they're coming from different places. Sometimes preparations can take a very long time. So many hours are spent trying to figure out the right sizes and in the storage room and the right shoe size and these type of things. So it goes back for months, literally. We, we uh, start planning and preparing because we need to have the right quantities for things. Puma is Team Bahamas' sponsor. The look says a lot for our brand. In addition to doing the podium performances, the athletes in the village need to really represent it's very important that every single athlete represents and, is, and has a very positive experience about what's going on. So we want them also to be clothed in a certain way. And so we try to give them what they need. So all they need is in this particular bags that we pack. Um, and they are always attired in a way that they know that they're representing the Bahamas. So with the start of the games just a few days away, is everything in place? The bags are ready. They were brought in this morning. Then we have the um, Pan Am pins that they will get as well to, in order to uh, interact and communicate with other members of other countries and exchange pins and things like that. So basically, they are ready. Good luck to Team Bahamas. For Zedna Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. Immediate past president of the BOC, Wellington Miller, was also is also that is making the trip to Peru for Pan Am. He's a part of the technical commission for the entire games. The technical commission is the commission that runs actually runs the game. So, as uh, I'll be managing part of the game, my responsibility to discipline the sixth discipline that I have that I'm responsible for is boxing, basketball, baseball, softball. Uh, judo and cycling, and I think it's a great. It's going to be a great experience because this is my first time in that in that role in the technical role. At uh, the 2015 the Pan Am Games, I was on the coordination commission. That's the commission that really set up the games, and then they turn it over to the technical commission to manage. So, um, being the first Bahamian to be on the technical commission to actually run a game, so for me. It's a great experience for me. I got to make some impression so that in the next time around 2024, another Bahamian will be able to be on that, that commission. Now Miller went on to say that he is fully prepared for the task at hand. It's going on to meeting, several meetings so we can go through what we do. And this is why I'm going down on the 21st because the start of a meeting, my, the next meeting that I'm having is on the 22nd that, that afternoon. And after that is continuous meeting, seven to eight every morning to make sure on the report what, what went wrong and how things is going. 
Justin Roberts is a part of the 242's tennis team for the Pan Am Games. Justin is warming up at the Cancun Cup in Mexico. He put a first round loss in doubles on Tuesday behind him and steamrolled through his first round singles match today, winning over Canadian Rianne de Troyes in straight sets 6-1 and 2 in an hour and 21 minutes. Up next for Justin now will be 7th seed American Gage Brimer in the round of 16. Jared Fitzgerald is a member of the swim team for the Pan Am Games. He's also one of four Bahamians who will be in action at the FINA World Championships in a matter of days. Now following his busy summer schedule, Fitzgerald will be headed back to Florida to train for the upcoming collegiate season at the University of Tampa. I uh, swam my first year at Indiana University, which is uh, up in Bloomington, and just transferred because I figured I wanted a better fit. Um, wasn't really too happy in the cold, and then just been loving it at Tampa ever since. So I'm my first year there, and yeah, I've been loving it. I'm going into my junior year this year. You know, I want to lead the, the Tampa team to uh, collegiate champs. You know, it would be the first time ever for the men's side, and uh, something we were so close to this year, and I just think we could do it next year for real. The Pan Am Games will be the first major event for Mike Sands after being elected president of the North American, Central American, and Caribbean Athletics Confederation, and he's excited about what lies ahead. Right now, there's a transitional period. I've met with um, President Victor Lopez, and we're discussing the transitional process. Um, and then once that is taken place, then we will do some other assessments to determine our next step. But we do have a plan in place where we intend to focus on the individual member federations, which has always been my, my message, that we're going to try and strengthen each member federation. We're going to conduct a SWOT analysis of each member federation to determine where we need to strengthen them so that together we can grow the area even stronger. Now, being elected, NACAC president also gives Sands an automatic seat on the IAAF Council, meaning he will have a say in how track and field is run around the world. There are often times that I forget about that simply because the focus was so much on the election itself for the NACAC presidency that it slips my memory every so often that this presidency also comes with a position on the NACAC, on the IWF Council. And so for that, again, I've not focused my attention on that yet, but I'm also excited about being able to sit at the table at the Council of, of the IWF. The B3 is struggling with funding for sending off various national teams this summer, and as it stands right now, the under-20 Pan Am team may not be able to travel. I think it would be wrong to say that the government has not provided some support. Uh, the budget for this event is $50,000. The government has given us $25,000. It still does not take us to where we need to be. And so while we appreciate that the government cannot carry the burden alone, it is a shared responsibility that we are trying to impress upon the country that we cannot do it on our own. The B3As has become my full-time job, and I'm not paid a dollar for it. But at the same time, the burden still rests with the Federation to ensure that athletes get to trips. And if we don't, then we are the bad people. And so I'm not casting blame on anyone. The only point that I make is that we need help, and the help should come from all sources. The countdown is on for the Grand Bahama Regatta. For the latest, we swing it up north to Romico Knowles. Thanks, Jonathan. Well, it's regatta time again in Grand Bahama, and the 24th edition is just two days away. Some 10 C-class loops along with six E-class loops will all be sailing the seas. This year's theme is celebrating our diversity through sailing, and organizers are encouraging all to come out and enjoy the cultural exchange on July 19th through 20th. The races are expected to begin at 10 a.m. with the opening ceremony at 7 p.m., after which there will be performances by Bahamian artists such as Veronica Bishop, and joining me live for an impromptu performance, the one and only Winfred Sullivan. Oh, it's always a pleasure when I'm called upon to be a part of this event here throughout the Bahamas. God is good, and I'm going to be doing it for you folks. So come on out. Let's have a wonderful time this Friday for the regatta here in Grand Bahama. Awesome, good stuff. Now the Grand Bahama Regatta Committee has also partnered with several hotels on Grand Bahama, and they will be offering special discounted rates under the code name it's regatta. And that's what's happening this year at this year regatta. Thank you so much for tuning in. Back to you in studio. Good to be a good time up north. And that will do it for sports. The Bahamas tonight comes back after the break. <laughs>
ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. 